Hello viewers, welcome again to our channel, The Biblical Perspective. And it's been a wonderful journey in the book of Isaiah and we've come to the end of the series. We have an exhausted book of Isaiah, you can never exhaust this book, right? But we've come to the end of um, our study. It's been a beautiful journey and I've really enjoyed it. You know, we've looked at all the things that have happened from um, Isaiah 1. We looked at the historical perspective, which is very, it's a very historical book. We've looked at the contemporary journey that we've gone through, and we've saw, we've seen things that jumped out at us for our own lives, what it has for me. Um, but then, a people were, were in the book of Isaiah that didn't care for the law of God, but yet God still stretched out His arm as we saw. He still wanted to comfort them to the point that He sent. As you said, um, let me see if I can get it. Christos, Yeshua, Amma, Shia. Amma Shia, and I loved all that. So I'm always learning something from these studies. But before we go into it, rebirth of the planet, I would like us to pray, and I, and I will pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. You're an amazing God, a God that leaves no... Um, no stone unturned or nothing left out that we don't need to know. Lord, you've taken us step by step through the book of Isaiah because you want us to be in this new nation, this new planet. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for using us and for helping us to get thus far in this journey. Lord, and thank you for giving us your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, who came to redeem and save us from this planet of sin. And I pray that those watching will get a blessing also. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 So, um, Sir Pedro, we're looking at the rebirth of a planet. What are your thoughts on that? This is not a concept that we invented. Okay. Here now we have reached the end of the book of Isaiah. Yeah. This is chapter 66. Mm -hmm. We began with chapter 1. We did. And we walk through the story of a relationship mm -hmm. between God yeah. and his people. Mm -hmm. We also saw, yeah. and that is all the more important to us today, mm -hmm. that the story has immediate contemporary applications yeah. but also I mean contemporary for Isaiah yeah. we spoke about the two realities oh, one that is yeah. that of the people mm. at that time as far as they could see it and understand it mm. and another one that is God's reality, which is ultimate reality that involves mm -hmm. beginning and end. Yeah. Not just of the book of Isaiah, but of the story of humanity. Yeah. So what we saw, because that's in summary today mm. of what we see, or what we've seen <laughs> in the book of Isaiah. Yeah. What we come to understand is that the story in the book of Isaiah about the people of Israel and their relationship to God mm. and vice versa mm. is an image mm. or a type of the relationship of God yeah. with all the nations which we would call humanity. This is why we're studying this book, because yeah, there is this typological mm -hmm. relationship between the two. That's absolutely. So, the theme yeah. that we saw, we were talking about the rebirth of, of, the, of, of the planet, not the nation. The I know, planet. And that was, I'm still backing in the next study, yeah. Yeah. What we see is there is a theme that goes by points. Mm. The first one is creation. Mm. The yeah. second one is fall. Yeah. The third one is redemption. Mm. God created a people yeah. whom he called 
his servant. Yeah. Israel, my servant. That's right, he did. Yeah. But for humanity, God also created a man yeah. so that he could serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. This is the word that is being used in, in Genesis when he says God put the man in the garden That's so right. that some versions have he may, he may cultivate it, he mm. may um, till it. Till it. But the original word that is there is serve. Okay. So God created man to serve. Yeah. God created Israel to serve. Yeah. That's the creation aspect. The fall aspect. Man decided to separate himself from God. Yeah. What does Israel do? The same. Israel decides to go astray Absolutely. and take a life of its own yeah. independent of God. What does God do? Like with man. God goes after man and seeks to bring him back. Yeah. The damage is done, Very much so. but he seeks Still. for a solution. Mm. He goes and looks for man. Yeah. He does the same for Israel. Yeah. He goes after Israel mm. and seeks to heal mm. Israel from its disease. If we find this analogy consistent, mm. I mean the link between Israel and the rest of humanity mm. within the context of the rebirth yes. of or the rebirth of the of planet, of the the planet, planet. Mm. we see at the end of the book of Isaiah, yeah. God is promising absolutely. Do you want to read that? Yeah. God is promising yeah. a new world 66, to them. You, you can read it. Yeah. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me saith the Lord. Yeah, you can, you can go on. Really? Mm -hmm. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be a boring unto all flesh. And in, 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 if, if you read the, the entire chapter, chapter yeah. you, you hear about how he will bring harmony and That's peace right. between oh. the the animals yeah. who are supposed to be predators Absolutely. and prey. Mm. So that's a rebirth. It is a rebirth. It's beautiful. But within the context of the yeah. book of Isaiah, he also says the one who will die a hundred years old that's right. will be still young. young. Yeah. Which leaves us to understand, like we did mm. throughout the series, there is a historical yeah present application yeah. but there yeah. is also there is a, a present reality but there is also an ultimate yeah, reality, reality. Yeah. on the theme of bringing harmony mm. on the theme of bringing peace between predators and, and prey mm. on the theme of giving rest to the people yeah and reading them of their enemies, yeah. the message is, because as far as we have reached in Isaiah, yeah. this is a prophecy. It is for the they future. haven't even gone into captivity no, they haven't, yeah. as we, we saw mm. in Isaiah 40 when God yeah. was speaking about the comfort of the people more than a hundred years before, and their return before yeah, they went yeah. into the trouble of exile. Yeah. In the same way, we can see God did it 
what he said to Israel, he, will do. he did it. So yeah. as we look at humanity being in parallel to Israel, yeah. the only thing that is left for us to see it's is the same way God did what he said he would do for Israel. Mm. He will do it again. He will do it for again. us. Yeah, absolutely. Because he said in Isaiah sorry, 48, he said the last part, the word of our God shall stand forever. Forever. Yeah. And, and that is for both realities. Absolutely. For Israel, but also for the nations. Absolutely. As we read or we studied mm. in our last study yeah. you will notice yeah. in the text that you read from isaiah 66 yeah. he says that those who will benefit from this mm -hmm. new situation will look and see mm -hmm. their enemies annihilated yeah this should be of interest to us and it should you're absolutely right because if there is a link between what God did for Israel mm. as an image for what he is planning to do for the, the, the whole of humanity. Yeah, at the end, yeah. It means that this world in which we live today mm -hmm. will have to be reborn. Yes, it will. There will be a rebirth of the planet. Absolutely. And the reason why this planet will be new is because yeah. there will no longer be the enemies. And wicked and no evil will be on this planet. Because we're going to see their people. We're going to see their carcass, aren't we? Because I'm, I'm, I'm in that group. We're going to see the carcass. I'm going to be looking at the carcass. But remember, in that group. this is the historical. You can't yeah. see the carcass. Because this it's not this yeah. part is the historical yeah. part of when God they, telling Israel, yeah. you will see the Babylonians, God, the Assyrians, and all God. the enemies around you, mm -hmm. you will see them dead. Yeah. Because they were your enemies, but I fought for oh, you. Mm -hmm. And I give you a new world. Yeah to leave it yeah. without these enemies. Oh, but what's interesting, sorry Pedro, I didn't mean to cut you there, but what's interesting when um, when they, when I think it was the Assyrians were coming against them and in the morning was it, was it um, Rabshake and in the morning 185 of them were dead and they saw the carcasses. Absolutely. So, so you can see yeah. the image is consistent. Absolutely. But as we have seen, yeah. that there is present reality yeah. and there is ultimate reality. Yeah. We saw that the solution mm. that God is working on is not just for the historical Absolutely. people yeah. to whom he is speaking. Mm -hmm. That solution also will apply mm. to the nations, yeah. to you and I. And the message of seeing the carcasses of the enemy only conveys yeah. the idea that the reality mm. will be there will no longer be mm. enmity That's right. in this world yes. that God will bring to us. Yeah. Now, we saw, we were just... Um, yeah, because we're looking at the rebirth. Of yeah, we, we're just summarizing the whole thing. Yeah, we are. Because we saw that the major, the major act in this plan yeah. was the coming of the servant mm -hmm. who slowly was identified yeah. Yeah. until a name was left. Yeah. And that name was Yeshua Hamashiach. Whom we call Jesus Christ yeah. today. It tells us how Isaiah yeah. is telling our story from creation yeah, to is. redemption. Mm -hmm. Now, we mentioned in our last study, yeah. Luke 
chapter 4 verse 18 yeah. but we did not read it would you yeah. like to read that for me please? of course we'll be reading from the king james version and i'll be reading luke 4 verses 18 and it says in your hearing when i find it luke 4 18. right so the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I and, know. I and, do. and at the end of it, he says, the word that you have just heard. Yes, this is day. It's a scripture fulfilled in your hearing. Fulfilled verse, verse 21. in your hearing. Which is, this solution it's was beyond yeah. the historical Israel. Absolutely. This solution was beyond the time of Isaiah. Yeah. This solution is still mm -hmm. at work Absolutely. today. Yeah, it hasn't culminated yet in the fullness of time. You can go to First Peter now, four, okay. verse um, chapter two, verse twenty-four. First Please. Peter two twenty-four. Peter is a disciple of Jesus. By the time he writes, yeah, the lamb has gone to the slaughterhouse. Yeah, the blood has been shed. Mm -hmm. The redemption act, yeah, has been accomplished. Yeah. What has he got to say? Yeah, this is what he has to say. Luke, sorry, 1 Peter 2, 24. Who is on self bear our sins in his own body, on the tree that being dead, that we being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Isaiah 53 jumps out at you there again, doesn't it? Absolutely. And Peter, what he is saying here, remember, this is a letter yes, it is. that he sends to people mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. And he says to them, our problem was sin. Mm -hmm. We were wounded. Yeah. But we are now healed. Sin wounded us. Applying yeah. the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. salvation, the anointed salvation, mm. to put it plain. Yeah. Because Jesus Christ is not a name. It's a title, isn't it? He is saying the solution is there. Yeah. You want to be sick or you have been sick you have been wounded you have been infected mm. but there has been mm. a solution mm. that solution yes. was the one mm. we call jesus christ mm. the promise is mm. you no longer have to be bound Mm. You no longer have to be killed. Mm. You no longer have to pay from your own pocket. Mm. Jesus Christ did that. Mm. He did that so that you can go free. And if you read now Matthew chapter 8, yeah. verse 17 for me, please. Matthew 8, 17. Okay, oops. So Matthew 8, 17 seems very interesting. So let's see. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet saying himself took on our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. It's all over the Bible, isn't it, Come on, You can't get away from the book of Isaiah. What, 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 what we are emphasizing here is at the end of the book of Isaiah. Every, Christ is everywhere. God says, 
I have worked it out. Mm -hmm. By the end of the book of Isaiah, God yeah. says, I have worked it out. Yeah. Now the disciples come. This is eight centuries after. Jesus comes and he says, this word is fulfilled today. Salvation is yeah. among you right today. Now, right now, right here. Freedom is among you today. Mm -hmm. And he goes to the slaughterhouse. Mm. He goes to the tree mm. Peter speaks about. Yeah. And there he does what was happening on Mount Zion yeah. in the temple. Mm -hmm. He sheds the blood that covers all lives. Yeah. And by the time he does it, Salvation is fulfilled. Absolutely. But something else is left to do. Mm -hmm. Can you read for me Isaiah 62? Sorry, 66, verse 2. Right. For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. Even to him that is poor, of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. This is in the context of the rebirth yeah. of the plant. Yeah. It is clear that God has done everything he yeah. needed to do mm -hmm. for his Yeshua plan. His salvation plan, mm -hmm. which he personified mm -hmm. in Hamashiach, mm -hmm. he now says, I put it before you. It is your choice. Absolutely. Me? I will look at who wants it. Mm -hmm. I will work with those mm -hmm. who understand their situation, mm -hmm. understand my position, mm -hmm. understand my offer, understand what response they need to give yeah. and accept mm -hmm. to work with me. When he says you can read that again for me. Please. I want you to actually. How did, how did you know? I, I well, I didn't know, <laughs> but I just thought you yeah. could read it again. All oh, right. For all those, for all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. God says, I have done everything. everything. But only those mm -hmm. who fulfill the latter part of this text That's right. will benefit from it. What are the characteristics? Can you just read the characteristics of those yeah. God will look at? Right. He said, that is, he said, that is poor and of contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. Did not Jesus say? Yes. Blessed yes, are the poor, poor in, in spirit. spirit in his servant on, on the, the mount. mount. Matthew, is that Matthew 5? Yeah, Matthew yeah. 5. The Beatitude. Matthew yes. 5. Because that jumped, that just jumped, that's why I wanted to read it again. It jumped out at me, the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom. Is the, kingdom. Of heaven. the story of Isaiah yeah. has laid it out. It has. Fully. Absolutely. We've studied it. We understood it. Yeah. But still. Yeah. In order for it to become a reality mm -hmm. in our lives. Yeah. We need two things. We need to humble awesome. ourselves. Mm -hmm. Being poor in spirit mm -hmm. is to empty yourself of that rebellious nature. Mm -hmm. That God from Isaiah 1 has been fighting to 
take, take you out of and to bring you into his spirit? Absolutely. So you read yourself of that. And the second thing you do, you don't remain empty. Once you have emptied yourself of that rebellious attitude, yeah. you do what he is reproaching Israel of not doing. Yeah. You what? Hear. You hear. Mm. You listen to what he has to say. He says to the one who listen to my word. Yeah. Why? Because without the word of God, there will be no new heaven. No, it won't. Well, not for you. No new earth. No, not for you. There will be destruction. Absolutely. There will be pain. Mm -hmm. There will be suffering. Mm -hmm. And it's all unnecessary because God says, My hands have already worked out the salvation. Yes. But it will only fit within the context of being poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. That is to humble yourself before yeah. God. And to hear and obey His word. To have a contrite heart. Mm -hmm. That is to recognize your situation. Mm -hmm recognize your need mm. and then feel yourself mm -hmm. with God yeah. with what God has to say yeah his word that's why Which man is, shall not live by like bread alone, alone <laughs> but by every word that comes it's out of the mouth out of the mouth of God and then it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same. This is a sobering series, you know. The end series is so sobering because we talk about the rebirth of the planet, but how much we desire it. The last one was the undesire of nations, but how much do we really desire the desire of nations, which is? The, the test is very simple. God put it in two steps. Yeah. Humbling yourself mm -hmm. and heeding his word yeah that's all mm. this is what israel from the beginning could not do which god had to work so hard for them to do mm. but now he's saying i have accomplished everything that would allow you to do that either or either you choose just make the choice be a carcass or be in the kingdom for eternity absolutely life or death which one which one which one are you going to choose and that's the beauty of god he doesn't force he doesn't push he chases for the better he's pro-life he's not pro-death so he's chasing you because he knows that if you're on this planet and you're with the wicked one you are going to die and he's saying you don't have to die choose me and live you know but we get so caught up in this world we don't even know how to choose him anymore we're choosing things to satisfy our needs, but it's always temporal. And we need to get back into a mindset that God is eternal. And everything that he has, he wants to have forever. Well, that, that's why um, I, I believe in Isaiah, even he spoke to the people. I believe it was um, Isaiah 50. Uh, we don't have time. Um, but I believe it was 55. Yeah. Where he says in verse 2, Wherefore do ye spend money? Yes. For that which is no bread. Absolutely. And you labor for that which Absolutely. satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, yeah. and let your soul delight itself in fatness. This message is consistent. Absolutely. And at the end of this series, this is not this is what we need to retain isaiah 66 yeah. verse 2 mm -hmm. the choice is ours. is ours god has done everything. everything amen that was a beautiful study i really enjoyed it i always do i love studying the bible and isaiah has been an amazing series an amazing study but we've come to the end of the, of the series now end of the study and the link for the live of this will continue with the live will be in the link below, will be posting the link below this, this video. So thank you once again for joining us. And we're on to a new study, a new series. 
So we'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.